Uh, good morning. I'm calling you from New York. I think you guys can probably see I have a nice view of the skyline. So I'm, I'm right in Manhattan in the city this morning. Um, thank you for having me. Do you mind if I go ahead and get started? I think we're right on time, right? Yep. Uh, okay. So I'm going to be um, taking care of uh, your speech. So uh, that's who's at the screen right now. Hello. Hi. Hi. All right. Let me try to share. I'm a consultant, so I made slides. That's like what we do. <laughs> Can you see? Yes, we can see it. Okay, excellent. All right. So, like I said, my name is Danielle, and I got my BS in chemical engineering at Tufts University in Boston, outside of Boston. And then I spent about seven years as a manufacturing engineer. And if you're wondering what a manufacturing engineer is, it's uh, if you've ever seen that show, How It's Made, and they show all the different production lines, how they make crayons and gasoline and furniture, like all different things. Uh, so manufacturing engineer will be right in the factory trying to make all of the, the processes more efficient and cost effective. So, uh, so for example, I worked in the medical device industry. So it's like life or death situation if the quality is good on the product. So I was responsible for making sure everything was, was high quality. I also looked at ways to reduce waste, reduce costs, uh, make sure customers got their products on time. Um, the, the production floor was a safe working environment, et cetera. So I did that for about seven years, kind of decided I want to go back to school. I got my MBA at Cornell, and now I'm a management consultant. I assume that Yvette told you a little bit about consulting. Um, so I focus in manu uh, manufacturing consulting. So for example, right now I'm working on a project with a, a big Fortune 50 company that makes uh, home goods and like do-it-yourself home improvement uh, equipment. And they have 116 manufacturing plants around the globe. And they've asked my company to come in. I work at Carney is the, is the name of the firm. They've asked us to come in and rationalize that global footprint. So I'm looking at 116 manufacturing plants and figuring out how we can consolidate to save costs and drive profitability for the company. So as you can see, I'm not an engineer anymore, but I'm definitely leveraging my engineering experience. So I put together some pictures and I thought you guys might get a kick out of my hairstyle and my clothes from the 1990s. Um, and, and in each of these pages, I think there's three or four pages. I've just put some advice. I just thought through, I reflected on my life and maybe some things that I might've done a little bit differently. So I did a lot of things. You could see I was a cheerleader. I was an all-star cheerleader. I did science fair, uh, like a science club. I played softball, I played the piano. I still play the piano. Uh, I played the flute. So I would say, you know, take this time, still be a kid, have fun, explore, try to learn about yourself, what you like, what you're good at. That will really serve you well in the future. Um, I'll also say in college, it's much different from high school for, at least for me it was, um, I, I found high school to be uh, not super intense. Um, I didn't really develop great study skills. Obviously, you got good grades. Um, but I would say really challenge yourself, take college level courses, learn how to study when you don't have an assignment due every single day. You have one midterm and one final, and that determines your whole grade. So, really learn how those, those um, time management and study skills. Um, in terms of kind of my story, I grew up in Syracuse, New York. My parents, my mom was a teacher, my dad was a computer science scientist. So they were like always encouraging me in school. And um, it was never really a question if I could be an engineer. Like this whole women in engineering conversation, I'm actually kind of surprised it's still happening. Um, I, I don't know, but I guess just in my experience, it just wasn't a question. Um, my teachers, my friends, my family all encouraged me. So I might have a, a slightly different viewpoint on this. Um, let me let me flip to getting ready for college. So I, I, I mentioned I went to Tufts. Here's my sales pitch. If you can be an engineer, if you can study engineering, if you think you can hack the, the math and science, it's really hard. I'm not going to lie. If you could do it, try to try to do it. And the whole point of this slide, this is the uh, Halloween circa 2002. Um, these are my best friends from my engineering class. And you could see we all studied chemi for undergrad, but we all do very, very different things. So um, 
the guy in the doctor scrub, he's a, an investment banker now in, in New York. Um, the guy to his right does urban planning down in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. My friend Taj, she's a doctor. My friend Adam is the only one of us who's still like a practicing engineer. I have some other classmates. One went to law school, became a patent attorney. Another is a chemistry teacher. Another one got a PhD. So the whole point is getting an engineering degree opens these doors for you. So you don't have to just be a chemical engineer or a mechanical engineer. You can really do anything. So if you're still kind of unsure about what you want to do, this is probably a good path because then you can still do anything. You're not going to be limited in your career. So let's, let's talk a little advice. So I know the first one is, is probably fresh in your mind right now, it, getting into college. And right now it's crazy getting into college. I understand that, but don't worry, like relax. If you study a STEM degree and you work hard, like you're gonna be okay. <laughs> you're, you're, you're not gonna be on the street, you're gonna be okay. So I know it's, uh, it's really tough and really competitive, but everything's gonna work out, don't worry. Um, in terms of picking a major and picking a college, I really wish I had talked to more people. So Syracuse is a small city. There's not, and my parents both worked in the same job for like 30 years. So we just didn't have like a big network of all these people we knew that were doing different things like LinkedIn did not exist. So I wish I had talked to more people to see what different careers were out there. Like I thought if I majored in math, I would only be able to be a math teacher. I had no idea what else was out there. So just start talking to people, your parents, friends, reach out to people on LinkedIn. People are willing to talk about themselves. Okay, so I was just saying, try to try to learn about different careers, try to learn what's out there. Um, I think there's opportunities now where you can shadow people at work, um, you know, go to the, work at the center, see what they do every day. Even getting some part-time jobs, um, there's a lot, there's just a lot out there now. And with LinkedIn, you can find whatever you're looking for pretty easily. So I would say just go out there and try to learn as much as you can before making that decision. It's not binding. And like I said, if you get an engineering degree, you can still do anything, but it might just help help you focus a little bit. So I, I wish I had done that a little bit more. Um, for picking a college, uh, a couple of things here. Um, obviously you go on the college tours, um, but I would talk to more than just the tour guide. Like the tour guides are like cheerleaders for the school. You want to talk to the real students and see what they don't like about school. So, I mean, if you had asked me 10 years ago about Tufts, they didn't have a great career search at, at that. I mean, I graduated in school three, so that's a long time ago. That's 20 years ago. Now they do. But that was like a huge complaint for me. And I would have been pretty open telling people about that. So, you know, talk to the students that are in your, in your major uh, and, you, you know, friends of friends, ask them what they don't like about the school. Ask them what their day-to-day -day life is like. And then secondly, this, this middle point here, where do you want to live after college? So I know that's like a hard decision to make. I think you guys are from Chicago. If you want to stay in Chicago, that's, that's fine. But if you think you might want to come to New York, I would just say consider um, moving to the city that you'd want to live because when you go to get internships and jobs, it's it's so much easier to be in the same location. I know that's like a hard decision to make when you're, you know, 13, 14, 15 years old, but I don't know, just consider, just consider that. So I'm gonna pause, is there any questions or I think I have one or two more slides. Um, All right. Questions? Sorry, go ahead. No, I think you can continue. Okay. Great. Okay, so during college, um, this is something I was kind of shy and introverted. I did not ask for help enough. Um, there are so many high paid administrators at your school. There's someone to take care of your mental health, your career planning, your resume. Like there are so many resources at the school and your job, their job is to help you. So I would just like day one, start talking to the career planning office. They'll help you build your resume. They'll help you prepare for interviews. There's, there's just so many resources out there. I would say just with day one, that's where you should start. Um, you could talk to your friends in your major. Um, you could talk to the other students that are in your major that are older 
if they have some good advice. Um, also, the internship is, is so, so important. Um, I think after even freshman year now, you can get one, even if you get an unpaid um, apprenticeship with your parents or just something, get that work experience on your resume. It's, it's really important. Um, one thing I regret, I didn't go abroad. I had the opportunity to go to Australia for a year. I was like way too scared to go that far away from home. I totally regret that. That's like such a cool opportunity. A lot of people go to Spain or France, you know, to learn the language. Uh, I would definitely consider that. Um, and then just get involved and have fun. So I was a cheerleader again in, in college. I also joined a sorority because as you can imagine, there, back 20 years ago, there weren't that many women in engineering. So I, I joined the sorority to make girlfriends and, and that was pretty fun. Um, yeah, I think, that's, I think that's it for during college. And then lastly, um, beyond college. So I worked in three medical technology companies, Millipur Sigma, Abbott, and uh, a subsidiary of Danaher. You probably haven't heard of these companies, but they're pretty big companies in that industry. I started in San Diego for seven years. It was such a beautiful city. There's so many people that go there after college. I highly recommend if you have any interest in living in Southern California. It's it's way different from LA. It's totally laid back. Surfer, it's, it's awesome. Um, and then I went to Ithaca. I, met, I mentioned uh, now I live in New York. And I did some projects in Zurich and Porto, Portugal. So I got to live in those two cities for like three months each. And that was really fun too. So just after college, I would say networking it's not that fun but it's really important um to find jobs i think of every job i've gotten except for one has been through networking and not through like posting on, on linkedin um mentors are really important you can find a female mentor even better um just to ask questions like kind of outside of the professional realm um, personal questions it's just good to have someone to bounce ideas off of um, keep an open mind. So I've kind of bounced around. It looks like I've only worked at four companies. There's a couple others in there that I worked at that just didn't work out. And it's okay to leave a job, especially nowadays. People are leaving jobs every one or two years. So <laughs> just don't worry about that. Find a good fit for you and, and stick it out. Um, I guess finally, nerds rule the world. So whatever high school drama you're going through now, remember that everybody who runs the government, who runs the banks, who runs technology, they were all nerds like us who loved math and science. So with that, I think that's it. I would love to take any questions. I think we have five or 10 minutes left. Thank you so much, Daniel. It was really nice hearing your story. I just had a few questions for you. Sure. Um, first of all, who were your role, role models growing up? Growing, growing up? up. Um, so my dad, I, I think I mentioned my dad was a computer scientist and he really, really encouraged me in science. And he bought me like a, for Christmas one year, I asked for a microscope so I could like look at my saliva under the microscope and it was really nerdy. And we did like chemistry experiments together, um, like math challenges and all this stuff. So I mean, he, he really encouraged me and he had some female coworkers who I, I also got to be friendly with. So that's that's kind of how I saw that. I mean, that's why I never thought I could never, you know, not be an engineer because I had I had these other women my dad worked with who were also computer engineers who, um, you know, they just served as an example of what I could do. That was really nice to hear. What advice would you give to young girls who are not as confident in pursuing their career in STEM fields? I guess I would ask why, because I mean, just get better grades than the boys and then it's it's not a question, you could do it, just be confident. <laughs> you could do it. <laughs> um, and one last question I'd like to ask is, what does a female role model mean to you? Well, that's a tough question because I mean, like I just mentioned the role model I had as a kid, but now in real life, there's not a lot of women in, in 
leadership position. So for me, I've had male role models and, and male mentors, I guess for most of my career. And it's not bad. Uh, I mean, they'll advocate for you and support you. I'm honestly, and again, I don't know if this is what you want to hear, but I don't know if, if I had a female mentor, if it would be different. And, you know, I would say for your generation. So like, let's take a step back. I look at my mother. My mother wanted to major in accounting. My grandfather said, no, you can only be a nurse or be a teacher. So she picked teaching. So then her generation, so they're, they're baby boomers. I think I'm probably the age of your parents. So then my generation, our moms told us you can be whatever you want to be. So now I think about 20 to 25% of my engineering class was women. So I just heard from Tufts, I get like the up the annual update, 55% of the incoming engineering class is women. So what does that mean for you? That means all of your, half, you know, half of your peers are gonna be engineers. So that's good. Um, and then you have my generation who will be role models for your generation. So my generation doesn't really have a lot of role models because of like what my mom experienced, but your generation will. And we know what it's like to not have them. So we will be open to mentoring women your age and your generation. So that's kind of how I feel about that whole uh, that whole role model. It's, it's gonna be better for you. <laughs>